leg of my journey, looking at some of Britain's youngest and most humongous volcanoes. At last, after what's been a very long journey, I finally come to the last chapter of our story. 60 million years ago, Scotland and the rest of Britain were firmly joined to what's now the North American continent. But today, America is 2,000 miles in that direction. To find out how that happened, I've come to the scene of the crime, here to the exquisitely beautiful, if slightly damp, island of Skye. Well, it's a bright and early start, and I've met up with volcanologist Dougal yeah, Jerram on the Isle of Skye. Around, you can see you're all made of this igneous rock. He's going to help me understand how Britain moved 2,000 miles away from the American continent. Skye is a volcano fanatic's dream. On its eastern coast lies the remains of one of the largest and most spectacular volcanoes in Britain, the Black Coolins. These dramatic peaks formed 60 million years ago, at the same time that Britain made its break from North America. Well, after an hour's ride across Loch Scarveig, we're finally nearing our destination. Well, now we've uh, sort of officially landed in the centre of a volcano. Let's go and have a look at some of the, uh, the marvels that we can see in the rock layers inside. I'm keen to know just exactly how big this volcano was. I must admit... Whoop. I was expecting to see a massive cone-shaped <laughs> volcano towering above us like Mount Fuji in Japan. Dougal assures me it'll all become clear. So where would the top of the volcano have been? Well, millions and millions of years ago, if you can imagine where we're stood today, we're right in the sort of bowels of this system. Probably one to two, maybe even three kilometres above us, there was a volcanic vent sort of pumping out lavas and, and, and explosions to the surface. So when you say we're in the insides, is that the magma chamber where the, the lava was cooking up to eventually be spewed out? Yeah, it's almost up? like the cauldron of the magma. Yeah. Where, where the magma comes into the shallow surface of the earth, blisters up before it erupts at the surface. That's what we call the magma chamber or the magma chamber plumbing system. 60 million years ago, we'd have been standing inside the magma chamber at the heart of this colossal volcano. Its scale is almost unimaginable, 12 miles across. From this central reservoir, magma rose to the surface, creating a gargantuan volcano over two miles high and 15 miles long. Over millions of years, this immense volcano has been eroded away, and all that's left is its carcass, the Black Coolins, the exposed shell of its vast magma chamber. How hot would it have been right here when the volcano was at its height? When we see the same composition rock types erupting at volcanoes in Hawaii and Iceland, these can be 1,100, 1,200 degrees centigrade, so four or five times hotter than the hottest temperature you can get in your, your oven cooker at home. So a bit warmer than today, then. <laughs> On a freezing day like this, you can hardly imagine an immense volcano erupting here. This volcano was erupting at the time when Britain was wrenched away from what's now North America. But what extraordinary force created that volcano and caused a whole continent to be ripped apart? My exploration of the volcanoes of Britain 
has finally brought me to the island of Skye, home to one of our biggest ancient volcanoes. And it was erupting at the same time that Britain made its break away from America. What's even more puzzling is that this fiery beast wasn't just big, it was one of the most prolific volcanoes on the planet. I've seen the guts of this massive volcano. Dougal's now hiking me 15 miles down the road to take a look at the outer edge of this monster and its unimaginably vast lava field. It certainly picked up a bit. Yeah. Well, the reason for dragging you this far, Tony, is to come to see this fantastic bay in the island known as Talisker Bay. And here she is, Talisker Bay, and all of these cliffs you can see all around us, all the rocks up here, the crags in Talisker Bay, all of these rocks behind along, even those big cliffs up in the background. This is all lava. All of these mountains? All of these mountains, yeah. They're sheet upon sheet of basaltic lava flow. What, even that great lump of a mountain up there? Yeah, I mean, that's pressure more. That's actually been fingerprinted, almost like a DNA print, back to the big volcano that we were, we were in this morning. That's a huge amount of lava. Yeah, kilometres away from here, travelling to this distance. I wouldn't have liked to have been around here when that was kicking off. <sighs> All this lava from just one single volcano. The island is like one massive lava field. Mile after mile after mile of volcanic rocks, hundreds, sometimes thousands of feet deep. The Black Coolins volcano spewed out thousands of cubic miles of lava. It was like an unstoppable tap of molten rock. It may have been one of the biggest volcanoes, but it wasn't alone. There were dozens more lava-producing vents here 60 million years ago. So why did Skye's volcanoes produce so much lava? And what's this telling us about how Britain was ripped away from North America? Dougal tells me a clue lies in the lava itself. And here's, ah, oh, here we go. Here's a lovely example just here. That's extraordinary. It looks like a great wet cow pat. Well, yeah, in some ways it does. What you've got here are sort of a series of ripples that are almost like ropes that form. And this texture's called a ropey lava or pahoehoe lava flow. How old is it? Well, this particular flow is around about 58, 60 million years ago. So we're actually looking at the fossilised top surface of a lava. And it's only really sort of visible here because of the way the waves have actually eroded this top surface. It's almost revealed from removing tons and tons of lava above here. This snapshot in time, we're able to see this. This could probably erode away in a few hundred years' time. Millions of years ago, we would have been standing in a river of runny lava. As it cooled, the outer crust hardened, but the inner molten rock continued to lurch forward, creating rope-like lobes and building up in layer after layer over thousands of years. What does it tell us about the birth of Britain? Well, I think if you put the pieces together, it's quite special. We've got this, this ropey, pahoe hoey lava. That only occurs when we have hot, runny lavas. We find these in Iceland today. And when we get hot upwellings of this really sort of low viscosity, runny lava, that happens when continents start to split apart. So here we're actually seeing a snapshot of, in, in effect, the smoking gun of a process that's happening around about 60 million years ago, the very point where we started rifting and drifting away from the American continent. 60 million years ago, Britain lay trapped between the American and European continents. But then this massive continent began to split apart again, when a huge current of molten rock surged upwards from deep inside the Earth. It hemorrhaged millions of tonnes of runny lava at the surface, creating the volcanic mountains of Skye. All along the rift, this rising molten rock also spread sideways, creating new sea floor and forcing the giant plates of the Earth apart. It pushed the American plate to the west and the European plate and Britain to the east. And the North Atlantic formed in between, creating the distinctive coastline of the British Isles. 
Over 60 million years, this process has pushed Britain 2,000 miles away from America. The enormous heat deep inside our planet continues to power this process and as a result we're still moving away from America at the rate of around about three inches a year which is about the time it takes to grow your fingernails and for exactly the same reason there are still highly active volcanoes erupting today not here but hundreds and hundreds of miles away over there in Iceland Iceland now sits above the very same crack in the earth where Sky once sat. These eruptions, which today create new mountains in Iceland, are the direct descendants of the volcanoes that once built Sky and drove the continents apart. When the earth splits open here, it does so along terrifying mile-long tears in the ground, which ooze millions of tonnes of lava in a matter of minutes. This awesome spectacle is how the Isle of Skye must have looked 60 million years ago, before its volcanoes were extinguished forever. This volcanic process was so massive, it not only created Skye, but also the magical islands of the Hebrides, and some of the most precious volcanic wonders in the world including Northern Ireland's legendary Giant's Causeway. Ancient volcanoes have built our land and even today continue to shape our lives. Since James Hutton first discovered a volcano in Edinburgh, Hundreds of remnants of our volcanic past have been found, scattered across our landscape and embedded in our history. They tell an amazing story of how the jigsaw pieces of Britain collided together and how they pulled themselves apart again to become the islands we know today. The history of the birth of Britain is an incredible story. James Hutton, the father of geology, figured out not only that Britain was very old, but also that once it had been dotted with volcanoes in the distant past. And we now know that those volcanoes were part of the process that smashed continents together and pulled them apart to create the Britain we know today. For me, it's been an incredible journey. I've come to realise that the Earth we live on is almost alive. It's a dynamic planet, one that never rests.